welcome back to another day of book miss. Today we are going to see how many books I can read in a 24 hour period. Christmas books, to clarify. I have eight books here. Uh, if you're curious which ones they are and a little bit more about them, I did go into them in a video for like my Christmas reads or my December TBR. I forget what I titled it, but you can go check that out. It does show all of those. Uh, but yeah, I want to see how many of these I can get through in a 24 hour period. I should say this is not a 24 hour reading challenge because I have stuff that I gotta get done. Like I, I unfortunately can't dedicate an entire 24 hours to staying awake and just doing nothing but reading or listening to audiobooks while I do stuff. Like there's just things that I have to do that I can't listen to an audiobook for. So this is just gonna be seeing how many books I can read in a natural 24 hours while I do regular life things. And we're gonna go we're gonna go from there. So I'm going to maybe find my phone. I don't know where I put it. Oh, <laughs> found my phone. We are going to put 24 hours on the clock or 23 hours and 59 minutes because for some reason it doesn't want to ever do 24 hours. And we're gonna hit start. And we'll see how many of these books I can get through. I think we're just gonna start with the one that's on the top of the pile, and that is the Xmas Holidays. So we'll see how, how this one is. I'm excited to get some cutesy reads in this holiday season. instead of doing a countdown, start doing the clock that shows how long it's been. So I don't have to do this stupid math. Anyway, I am only 20 pages in because I had a lot more stuff to do today than I realized. So it took me a little bit to sit down and actually start reading. But oh my gosh, this book is so funny already. Like just, just the whole idea of seeing your ex who I guess like did her wrong in the past completely naked at a party is just just picturing that scene is absolutely hilarious and this is written by like i don't know it's somebody that's not in the u.s so it has like that uk uh language and everything like blimey and stuff like that like it, the, the the lingo is so fun to read because it's different than like stuff in the states and so i really like that but like the banter is great and the characters seem really funny like just the whole setup of this book i really like i am a little worried that i'm gonna get annoyed because it sounds so far like their whole issue in the past was like a miscommunication and i hate the miscommunication trip because it's frustrating because like we're adults just learn how to talk to each other you know so like i'm worried about that but i am really in enjoying reading this and I have a feeling that this book's gonna be really probably one of the higher favorites because it's it's so funny already and I'm really enjoying it. Okay so I am about halfway through the book now and we have 15 and a half hours left so almost 10 hours down. I have gotten a lot more accomplished in the house than I have with reading but that being said now that I'm done with most of the things that I need to get done today I can just sit and read and I have to stay up really late tonight so that I can sleep tomorrow during the day for work tomorrow night so I'm good to go I'm set I can sit and read for quite a while now so like I said halfway done still really enjoying some of the banter in here the just the dialect and stuff is different than just like I said American authors uh, it's set in Scotland, which is super fun. I love that. It's one of the places that I want to visit someday. So I really enjoy that. Uh, the main character, Maya, 
really likes Jane Austen and Mr. Darcy from Pride and Prejudice, which I also really like because that is one of my favorite movies. Mr. Darcy is one of my favorite uh, fictional boyfriends. So I love that. I love that her and her friends pretend that they're Jane Austen characters and have tea and crumpets and talk in haughty English accents and it's just fun. I really like that. I think the only thing that I really didn't appreciate so far is that like for a little bit there every time she or Sam, which is the male character, had their internal monologues about the other person. It was always repeating the same things about how they felt about them. Like, oh, it is conceited and he's a jerk and this and like it was repetitive. It got it got redundant and it was just unnecessary. Now that we're about halfway through, I I definitely think I know what happened in the past and I got an inkling pretty quickly on about what went down between the two of them that led to this whole issue and yes it's a miscommunication but it isn't so much one that they meant to have it's not them being unwilling to talk it's one that's sort of brought on by somebody else and yeah i'm pretty sure that i'm sure that's what happened like 98 percent sure that that's what had happened so sam is dating somebody else now that uh, Maya actually knows and that she used to be friends with and for that reason like the two of them don't get along Sam's girlfriend Kat is just super snarky not really the best girlfriend and you can you can tell that stuff's going on and that it's not the best relationship and it's really frustrating because Sam seems like a really really nice guy that's willing to do a lot for his friends like the whole reason he has this side job is for one of his friends which isn't a spoiler it's on the back uh, he's a great guy and he just wants so desperately to have somebody good in his life and to not be alone that he's willing to deal with Kat, which is so sad and frustrating because he's not picking up on things that he should be picking up on. That being said, I do think that we are heading into a trope that I absolutely can't stand. We're getting extremely close. Like, we are teeter-tottering that line and I'm not appreciating it because regardless of circumstances it's just a trope that I'm not okay with ever in books mainly because I'm not okay with it in real life so like I would really appreciate if, if some stuff could get worked out so that we could stop teetering that line and if we cross it I'm not gonna be happy not saying I'm going to DNF the book, but I am definitely going to dock some points in the rating system, if that is a thing. But anyway, we're going to move on from that. Otherwise, I am really enjoying it. They both work at a ski resort together as ski instructors, and that is just bringing back so many great memories from when I was a, a kid uh, in high, up until high school. Me and my brother used to ski competitively. It was something that my dad taught us how to do and then we got on the ski team and we did that for years. So just reading about being back on the slopes and skiing, it just brings back so many great memories. It makes me really want to go out and go skiing because I haven't in a couple years and this is just giving me the urge to go back out again with my dad, make some, some new memories and everything. Uh, so that's fueling a lot of nostalgia, which is something I want out of my Christmas books, in all honesty. I want that homey, nostalgic, warm, fuzzy feeling. I want it I want it to feel like a Hallmark movie. I want it to make me feel good inside, so I'm really loving that. But yeah, we will see how much longer it takes for me to get through this. I don't think it's gonna take too long. It's, it's a really easy read, which I appreciate. Also, we switched into comfy clothes because that's necessary. And I got this cute little Santa mug that I was enjoying hot chocolate in. So we have all of the cozy vibes going on right now. And I'm here for it. I'm absolutely here for it.
finished this and it was such a cute, perfect Christmas read. It didn't cross that line that I was worried about it crossing, which made me so, so happy. And oh, this one's gonna be hard to beat. It's gonna be so hard to beat. Like the romance in this is just so cute. Like the banter between these two and their storyline, like as frustrating as some of it was, was still really, really good once it got sorted out and everything. And I loved that at the end, it wasn't just like, it wasn't just them getting together and then like everything's wrapped up like a normal Hallmark movie would be and stuff. Things have to get worked out for uh, Maya and her family because her family has a lot of expectations for her that she isn't living up to, that she just doesn't want for her life anymore. So she has to sort through those. And um, Sam has to work through a lot of the stuff from his own personal life, his relationship with his toxic girlfriend and stuff. And I just really liked that this book didn't just leave all of that hanging, it talked about all of it. It talked about the necessity of fixing things, of becoming your own person, of working through tragedy, toxicity, all of that stuff. Like, it got more into it than just the romance, and I will always appreciate that about a book. So this is definitely a four star, maybe even a four and a half, I'm not sure. I think I'm gonna stick with four. I'm gonna stick with four just because we did get very close to that line that I wasn't appreciative of. And if we'd gotten, if we hadn't done that, I probably would have rated it higher, but yeah. Solid four star, really liked it. It just, it made me smile so much while reading it. It's gonna be really hard to beat this one, but we will see if I can. I, I don't know which one I wanna read next. Let me go, let me go get my stack. Here's my stack. I am not putting Icebreaker in this just because I'm doing a buddy read for it so I can't finish it all right now. So there's really no point. I missed a book. I looked over at my TBR cart because something had tipped over and it was another one of the books for this. I'm not sure how I missed it. Anyway, this is now the stack. I have two, four, six more. Like I said, Icebreaker, not doing it because I can't finish it right now. Uh, so I don't know which one I want to do. Next, ah, oh, this is gonna be hard. This is gonna be hard. Lincoln, Lincoln. I'm gonna see if I can get my dog to help me. Lincoln, pick a book, come here. He doesn't want to, he wants to sleep. He's like, it's late, I'm tired. It is like 12.30 at night. And just as an update, I have 13 hours and 17 minutes left on my 24 hour reading quest. So Lincoln's not gonna help me. Let's see. See if I can get Ziva to help me. Ziva, pick a book. Pick a book. Come here. Oh, come on, really? For once you don't want anything to do with what I'm holding in my hands? Ziva, pick a book. Come here. Come here. Okay. We're gonna take that to mean this one, because that's the one that she was closest to, which is Wreck the Halls by Tessa Bailey. I am very excited for this, mainly because I've never read a Tessa Bailey book and I know that people really, really enjoy her books, so I'm excited to see what this one's like. This one is about a a girl who's, she's the daughter of music royalty. She spends her day restoring old books though and avoids the limelight, but when a producer offers her a lot of money to reunite her mother's band on live TV, she begins to wonder if it's time to rattle the cage and shake up her quiet life. And then I guess she has to interact with the lead singer's son named named Beat Dawkins. Mm. It says that they met each other as teenagers. Mel felt an instant spark, but it's nothing compared to the wild, intense attraction that builds as they embark on a mad, madcap mission to convince their mothers to perform one last show. While dealing with a rock star shooting against a 24-hour film crew, brawling Santas, and mobs of Doran fan, Mel starts to step out of her comfort zone with Beat by her side, cheering her on. She's never felt so understood. But Christmas Eve is fast approaching, and a decades-old scandal is poised to wreck everything. The Steel Birds reunion, their relationship with their mothers, and their newfound love. That is a lot going on in one book. I'm gonna be completely honest, the fact that this kid, this guy's name is Beat, is already not, not a good start. That is stupid name. It's a stupid, stupid name. 
and uh, yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be interesting for me because I'm gonna be annoyed every time that I have to read it. So we'll see how that affects things. But oh well, hopefully it'll be good. By chapter, I mean the prologue. I read the prologue. And it's when they're kids and they're 16, and her, the parents, like Beat and Melody, are both. Oh, those names. Anyway, they are both the kids of bandmates that had already split up prior to them being born, but like they're sort of connected because. Everybody always asks them to do interviews asking if, oh, is the band getting back together? Are you like your mom? Can you sing? They said the third. So they meet once when they're both 16 because they're both doing these interviews and they have like this weird connection instantly and it just seems so unrealistic. And I'm really hoping that's not the way the rest of this book is going to go with like instant love and stuff because that's going to drive me nuts. I am officially halfway through my 24 hours. We have 11 hours and 58 minutes left. And I am now on chapter 9 of Rep the Halls, which is page 92. It is actually a really fast moving book. And if I don't focus on the name too much, it doesn't bother me anymore. <laughs> but I am really enjoying it. Like, yes, their interactions and like their relationship I'm gonna call it a relationship like just like they're so at ease with each other even though it's so new and like they're they've said they're like it doesn't really make sense that we feel as connected to each other when we've only met once and we really don't know each other but like it's there and it's something that they're trying to sort of figure out and understand but like they feel comfortable with each other and it's like an instant attraction thing, but it's not really going further than that, so I'm okay with it because it's like just an instant attraction, like an instant friendship. And, you know, I don't have trouble believing that there are people that, that feel that way about each other, that like other people just make them feel comfortable and like they've known each other for a long time. So it doesn't bother me as much anymore because it hasn't turned into an instant love, which I don't like. <laughs> but... Yeah, I uh, really like Melody's character. She's so quirky and funny, and I'm not always a huge fan of quirky characters because they sometimes are just overdone and it verges on annoying. But she's quirky in like a, it's, it doesn't seem like it's trying too hard sort of way. It's, it's actually like a natural quirkiness and I really like it. She works as a, a children or young adult children's book Restore? I don't think I'm saying it right. Like, but she works with rare books and she restores them if they need to be restored and everything. So she kind of keeps to herself. And like I said, she's a little quirky. She says, she says the darndest things. They're so freaking funny. And I just really like her. Uh, so yeah, really enjoying it so far. They've been given two weeks to try and reunite their mothers who had this super intense, huge falling out. Like I said before, they were born and the whole premise is to get them back together for a reunion on Christmas Eve and the whole attempt is going to be streamed live so it's not even just a reality show that's like pre-filmed it's they're streaming it live they have two weeks to get this all in place and everything and it actually like there's a lot more at stake for some of the characters than just attempting to get this to work which I really like because I wasn't expecting there to be higher stakes for it, but I appreciate that there are. And I'm not going to say what it is or who it's for because 
back of the book doesn't tell you that, and I don't want to give it away for you guys. But that did come as quite the surprise that I was okay with. I I enjoy little little surprises in books like these. So <clears throat> yeah, I'm really enjoying it a lot. I'm also really curious where it's going to go as far as their relationship because like obviously they're going to end up together at least once and I'm going to assume that there's going to be some spicy scenes because I, I thought I heard that she writes out spicy scenes. He keeps making references to like the way that he leans with his in intimate life, like his personal life. And I think it's going to go a way that I don't typically see in books that aren't considered like dark romances. Which would be really surprising because like this cover doesn't give that vibe. I could be reading it wrong, but I don't think that I am. Yeah, I don't think that I am. <laughs> and this let me this cover's misleading if that's the case. Hello. So I did in fact go to sleep last night around three in the morning. So I just woke up and yes I pulled the same sweatshirt back on again. Do not judge me. Uh, <laughs> and I have about two hours left to read for my twenty four hours. I am on page two hundred out of 350 pages in Wreck the Halls. Still really like it. Like, it's funny. It is so, so funny. The Like I said, the main female character is really quirky. Her mom is a freaking trip. Like, she's something. She lives in, like, this compound and uh, Melody keeps going, like, she she's not a cult leader, but like some people think she could be and it, it she just went off the deep end and she doesn't really seem to care about Melody too much, which is really sad. Uh, but yeah, every every character in this book is just so interesting. They're definitely out there, uh, which is normally annoying if like nobody's really that realistic, but I actually kind of like it in this one. It kind of works. So I'm enjoying it. So we're gonna see if I can get through the rest of this quick in my two hours. Maybe see if I can start another book before time is up. Secondhand embarrassment that I'm getting right now from this book is just. God, he's so cheesy but so cute at the same time. I can't get enough of these two. They're adorable. They're absolutely adorable. Okay, so I cheated a little and I, I paused the timer and went and got my nails done, but. I have about half an hour left. I finished Wreck the Halls and oh my gosh. It's so good, five star read, which is so mind blowing to me. I never thought I would give a Christmas book a five star read, but I absolutely loved that book. It's so, so good. All of the characters are just really well done. They're hilarious. Melody and Beat are just like their chemistry and their, just the way they interact with each other is so cute and wholesome and they complement each other really well. and. It's just the characters in this book are so, so well done. And I know it's like a really short time span that they're together and everything, but it feels like they've known each other for a really long time, the way they interact and everything. And I just, yeah, I thought the story was so well done. I didn't think that we were gonna beat the Xmas holidays, but we did. So I don't know where to go from here. I don't think we're gonna beat those. Like, I feel like the rest are just gonna be a disappointment. And, <sighs> I hope it's not the case, but we shall see. Let me go get my next book.
I already had it planned that we were gonna read the holiday switch next. It's only have half an hour and this is a short one. So I, sh I should be able to at least make maybe a little bit of a dent in it. This is a YA Christmas uh, book. It follows Lila. She is working at the local inn. She's a senior in high school. She just wants to make some extra money. The inn's, the inn owner's nephew starts working with her. They don't really get along and now they have to work side by side. They accidentally end up switching phones at some point and they realize that they've been hiding secrets from each other. So I'm excited to see what like a YA Christmas book is like because I really have never read one of these. So we'll see. So I have four minutes left and I'm not willing to start a new chapter. So we're gonna call it a day. I got 38 pages into this, so I am now at chapter four. It's not quite hitting the same as the other book, which I knew was gonna happen, but that's, it's fine. It's fine. Like I said, it follows Lila. She works at an inn. It's called the Bookworm Inn, Bookworm Inn which I really like. Uh, and uh, it's set in Holly, New York, which I'm not sure if that's a real place or not. But in the book, it says that the town was like a scene for a really famous movie and the inn was part of that. So they have a lot of tourists that show up, especially around Christmas. And they're always uh, visiting the inn because they have memorabilia from the actual movie set and everything. So it's a really busy time of year. Lila's looking for more work because she's trying to pay her way through college. She just gotten accepted to the school that she really wants to go to and she's worried about her family paying for it. So she's trying to get more hours and her nephew, Teddy, who takes the hours that she wants, which is why she has issues with him. They've never even met, but she has problems with the fact that he just shows up, takes the hours that she wants because he has some stuff going on of his own that are forcing him to stay with his aunt for a little bit. So that's sort of what's going on. Lila is going to go to school for biology, but she's a huge book nerd. She set up like this little free library in the inn's gift shop. She has her own blog that she's hiding from her family because they, they don't really approve of social media. So she blogs about books without her family knowing and like, I like that side of it. I, I, I appreciate a good bookworm character. I feel like I've said that already. So I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah, right now we're just sort of setting it up. So we'll see if I end up liking it a little bit more once I get more into the story of it. But that is going to conclude my 24 hours of reading Christmas books. So I finished The Xmas Holidays wreck the halls and then it got like 40 something pages I think 40 something pages I already forget into the holiday switch considering the amount of stuff that I did yesterday and the fact that I also got a full night's sleep I'm pretty happy with finishing two we're gonna call it two and a quarter books maybe like two and an eighth <laughs> finishing two books and starting a third I'm I'm pretty pretty happy about that and it has been a great kickstart to the Christmas season. So I'm really excited to see what the rest of these Christmas ebooks are gonna be like. But that is, concludes this video. Thank you so much for watching another day of Bookmas. If you haven't seen any of my other videos, feel free to go back and watch and I will have some more to come. But yeah, thank you so much. If you did enjoy, please like, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.